Thank you. Thank you for that warm round of disappointment. Uh, <laughs> last year's class got Robert Downey Jr. You guys get some Jew you never heard of. <laughs> Iron Man, Iron Deficiency. Um, <laughs> and, but, uh, folks, I know just how you feel. I, I got the call recently, and they said, hey, we'd like you to give a lecture at Pace. And I said, fantastic. I love your picante sauce. And, <laughs> And when, when they said it was a high school, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because I remember when The Simpsons started 28 years ago, 1988. And when The Simpsons began, we were considered the most shocking and offensive thing on TV. And schools like this, schools banned Bart Simpson's t-shirts. And, and the National Council of Churches condemned The Simpsons until somebody pointed out that the Simpsons are the only family on TV that actually goes to church. <laughs> we were also condemned by the President of the United States. It was George Bush Sr. said he hated the Simpsons, and his wife, Barbara Bush, said the Simpsons is the stupidest thing I've ever seen, which made me think, hey, lady, <laughs> look at your kids. And, uh, <laughs> Fred said, don't get political, and that, that lasted about 90 seconds. Anyway, that was 28 years ago, 28 years. So I want you, The Simpsons have been on the air for 28 years, and I want you to let that sink in for a minute. If The Simpsons had been aging like real people all these years, Bart Simpson would be 38. Maggie, the baby, would have babies of her own. Marge would be on Social Security. And Homer would have been dead for nine years. <laughs> anyway, but the, luckily, the Simpsons haven't changed, but the world has. They looked a little harder at the show, a show that once shocked and offended them, and they began to realize, hey, there's a little more to this. Behind all the laughs, there's a lot of heart and a little bit of brains, too. You want proof? The Simpsons recently was endorsed by the Pope. <laughs> the Pope, and it wasn't even this kind of cool hippie Pope we got now, you know? <laughs> the Pope with all his far out ideas like feed the poor. Uh, <laughs> this, this was that previous Pope, the kind of, a good man, but that kind of scary German Pope who, <laughs> who looked like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Pope Precious the 23rd. Um, <laughs> he loves the show, and uh, politicians have embraced it, too. This is not a joke. Uh, this, uh, this past year, one of our actors was thinking of leaving The Simpsons, and Ted Cruz auditioned for the job. And after the show, after this uh, ceremony, please go on YouTube, look up Ted Cruz's audition tape on YouTube. Ted Cruz auditioned for The Simpsons, which makes two jobs he didn't get this year. <laughs> anyway, he, he's not the only politician who got involved. Tony Blair, Tony Blair, the Prime Minister of England, did a guest shot on The Simpsons because his children made him do it. And the Rolling Stones, they did our show because their grandchildren made them do it. <laughs> that was kind of weird. Uh, we've had writers like John Updike on the show, painters like Jasper Johns, opera singers, scientists, and Weird Al Yankovic twice. We, we had Weird Al Yankovic twice. We've had Stephen Hawking three times. That's not the weird part. The weird part is there are days where I walk into my office and Stephen Hawking is just sitting there. Now, it's not weird he's sitting. Uh, 
That's what he does. Um, the weird thing is, I swear this is true, my office is on the second floor, and we don't have a ramp, and we don't have an elevator, and we don't know how the heck he got up there. I think he's faking. Um, I can honestly say we've had about 300 guest stars on the show, and they have all been a pleasure to deal with, except for one. I'm, uh, I'm not allowed to tell you her name. Oh. I wasn't supposed to say it's a her. Um, I'll tell you what, though. If you know your Simpsons trivia, you can figure out who our worst guest star was. I'll just, I'll just tell you her first name. Oprah. <laughs> Oprah, by the way, has the biggest head I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. It's, it's like this. The, the, the woman could play herself at Disneyland. And, uh, <laughs> and I told you how schools used to ban Bart Simpson's t-shirts. Now colleges all across America are teaching courses in The Simpsons, which I think is a very good sign of the apocalypse. Uh, <laughs> now, this is not to say you can't learn things from The Simpsons, and I'll give you just one of many examples. Uh, there's a very famous Simpsons episode where we showed Homer in 3D animation, and he's wandering around this landscape of uh, geometrical shapes and grids, and an equation goes by in the background. And the equation goes 1742 to the 12th power plus 1841 to the 12th power equals 1917 to the 12th. And I remember seeing that going, hey, that's pretty interesting. And then about five years later, it hit me. That equation can't be correct. It violates Fermat's last theorem. a to the n plus b to the n cannot equal c to the n for any power of n greater than 2. Fred, you got that, right? <laughs> so, so I called David Cohen, who wrote that episode. David Cohen created the show Futurama. David Cohen is one credit shy of being a professor at Princeton. And I said, David, that equation in your episode isn't correct. And he said, I know, that's the joke. <laughs> that's how he talks. He said, he said, although the equation is not correct, it is true to the first 300 decimal places, so it would fool a computer. That's how smart David Cohen is. He writes jokes only computers laugh at. <laughs> you don't get jokes like that on Family Guy. Um, anyway, it's not just The Simpsons you can learn from. Uh, I work on all those Ice Age movies, and uh, we have a team of scientists researching those movies, and every weird character you see in the Ice Age movies really existed 10,000 years ago. Except for one. They sent me the script for Ice Age 3 to work on. And I said, what's it about? And they said, the Ice Age characters meet the dinosaurs. And I said, there were no dinosaurs in the Ice Age. And they said, nobody knows that. <laughs> so I worked for the movie for four years. And every once in a while, I would write in a line where Manny the Mammoth would go, why are there dinosaurs in the Ice Age? And they would always cut the line and say, nobody knows that. Two weeks before the movie came out, they had their first public screening for a test audience. And five minutes into the movie, a six-year-old boy yelled out, why are there dinosaurs <laughs> in the Ice Age? Luckily, it didn't hurt the movie at all. Uh, the movie was a big hit in America. And overseas, Ice Age 3, was the number three movie of all time. It was, nobody knows this, it was Avatar, Titanic, Ice Age 3. <laughs> and I was visiting the Ukraine. I was, I was visiting the Ukraine because my idea of a vacation is your idea of a hostage situation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm visiting the Ukraine, and I'm in a public park, and there's statues of Scrat everywhere. Scrat is that ugly squirrel who's always chasing, a, chasing his acorn and never getting it. And I said to a woman, why do you guys love Scrat so much? And she said, 
He teaches children that life is hopeless. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a great message to end on? <laughs> Life is hopeless, kids. Happy graduation. But I know, I know I'm supposed to end the commencement address by telling you, giving you some sort of piece of advice or some, some source of wisdom that somehow you didn't learn in this school for 25000 a year. And, uh, <laughs> And I think the wisdom I can pass on to you is this. You studied hard for four years, and now, congratulations, you can forget everything you learned. <laughs> Nothing you learn in high school is of any use later in life. <laughs> You've been punked. It's a... <laughs> I promise you, algebra, you will never use algebra again. Shakespeare, nobody reads Shakespeare unless they're forced to. <laughs> Biology, I spent four years in high school dissecting frogs. Now I know exactly what to do if I see a frog have a heart attack. <laughs> I, I know exactly how photosynthesis works. I don't know what makes my car run. I shoot gas in the passenger window. Um, so what's the purpose of high school? It was basically so your parents knew where you were from eight to two every day. <laughs> your, your mothers didn't want you wandering into a bar at 11 in the morning. And, running into your parents, and, uh... <laughs> but don't worry, uh, high school is not the biggest waste of four years of your life. College is. And... <laughs> anyway... You know I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's a joke, and I have to say that because I lecture at a lot of places, and they don't always get the joke. I mean, they don't really speak English all that well sometimes. <laughs> I'm talking about South America, and South Korea, and South Carolina. <laughs> this is an absolutely true story. I gave, I gave a speech, I gave a commencement address just like this one in South Carolina. And when it ended, bodyguards rushed on stage and hustled me out of the building saying, people didn't like your jokes and they want to kill you. <laughs> and this is, they weren't kidding. This is South Carolina where people wear guns in the shower. And I'm kidding. They, they don't shower. And, uh... <laughs> but... But I... But I learned something that day. I learned that having a good sense of humor doesn't mean laughing at jokes you agree with. It means laughing at things you don't agree with. And most importantly, it means laughing at yourself. If you're a Hillary Clinton supporter, please, I hope you can still laugh at Hillary Clinton jokes. And if you're a Donald Trump supporter, well, you probably have a pretty good sense of humor already. Uh, the, Simpsons, the Simpsons has taught people to laugh at things that used to shock and offend them. It's taught you that the more you open your mind, the more you're gonna learn, and the more fun you're gonna have. So I hope that's the advice you can take with you when you head to far-off colleges like Emory. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, doctors tell you that laughter is good for your heart, and the Bible tells you laughter is good for your soul. And so to the class of 2016, I wish you all a long life of love, of learning, and especially of laughter. Thank you.